Let's jump right into it. We're going to get to Weekend Warriors, Sunday Scaries, our best bets for Monday Night Football, and all that fun stuff. But before we do, the Roto World Player News. For all your Roto World Player News, go to NBCSports.com. And where else to start than San Francisco? Uh, the 49ers traveling to Philadelphia to dismantle the Eagles, quite frankly, uh, behind the arm of Brock Purdy, behind their defense, all of this skill talent. Brock Purdy, 19 of 27, 314 yards. Yes. Four touchdowns, four touchdowns, almost 30 fantasy points, Matthew. I mean, this offense was simply rolling in Philadelphia. They looked awesome. And th they're the best team in the NFL. They're the best team in the NFL, I think, by a decent margin. Yep. We talked about this game coming into this as well. And Sam Howell may be a future Hall of Famer, but Brock Purdy is very legitimately a future MVP, Jay Croucher. You talked about this. Are, you've talked about this throughout the year, but ad especially ad nauseum. <laughs> like, we wish you would talk about anything else. Your daughter's obscure Murphy's <laughs> basketball, but no, it's all nothing but Brock Purdy for MVP talk, including this. Take a listen here. Tomorrow morning, my last shot, the two MVP favorites in the NFL are Dak Prescott and King Brock Purdy. Brock ah, Purdy goes into Philadelphia, so beats Jalen Hurts. Who would have thought that? Two months so you, ago. Brock so you, Purdy and Dak Prescott. So you're going against my grain right here. I am. That's what I am. Okay, the Eagles okay. can't keep getting away from this. Uh, they've been <laughs> admirable, but it runs out today, yeah. uh, particularly with clear skies in Philadelphia. Brock Purdy's your full MVP hearts. favorite. Yeah, clear eyes, full hearts. Can't, can't get lose. out of can't, can't get away with this again, Jalen Hurts. There you go. You uh, you called it Jay Croucher. I did, and woke up this morning to a beautiful sight as I tweeted about. Brock Purdy's plus 300, the MVP favorite. Brock Purdy is the last pick in the draft. No one knew who he was uh, this time a little bit over a year ago. Dak Prescott, the joint favorite with him. They move ahead of Jalen Hurts. And the reason why I'm so happy about this, outside of having bet on both of these guys, is that these are the two most deserving candidates at the yeah, moment. Right. Every single stat, the way that we evaluate MVPs, yes, record matters, but QBR, passer rating, EPA per play, touchdown to interception ratio, you know who the top two guys are for all of those stats? Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott. So they should be your MVP favorites. You know, the funny thing is, though, mm. I didn't think Purdy was that good yesterday. I thought he was fine. Like, he was very solid, but it was a lot of yak, a lot of short stuff. He was way better in games like against the Jags, where he's throwing more deep. Against Dallas the first time, he was a lot better in that. But just because of the narrative around this award and going into Philadelphia and beating Jalen Hurts, this is when he becomes the MVP favorite. And look, he was he was great yesterday, but uh, certainly he has had better games. But he didn't, like, but again, didn't turn the ball no. over, took what the defense gave him. Again, like, if, if they want to play him deep and give up yards after the catch, yep. to right. Debo Samuel, to Christian McCaffrey, to Brandon Ayuk, God bless. Why not? Let them let them do that. It was a weird game plan for Philadelphia. We've talked about this quite a bit. I'm, I'm bringing this to NFL for one second, then we'll bring it back to fantasy. But we've talked about how Philadelphia, and it's it's weird to say Philadelphia is a fraudulent team because they're really good. Yeah. They're a really, really good NFL team. But they weren't a 10-1 and one football team. No. Right? I mean, again, they got lucky against the Bills. They got lucky against the Chiefs. They got lucky against the Cowboys. Like, Gabe Davis runs the right route. Uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling catches a ball. Um, you know, Dak Prescott doesn't step out of bounds at the one-yard line or the Luke Schoonmaker call gets called, in my opinion, correctly versus down at the one-inch line. What a, they lose those games, and all of a sudden they've got four losses versus one. And so they've been playing with a little bit of uh, a fire, if you will. And I think the no Niners came in there and said, this is what a complete football team looks like. The Eagles have some flaws. They're still a very good football team. Yeah. I mean, believe me, I'm a Commanders fan. <laughs> I, I would kill for half of what the Eagles have. But there's some flaws there, Jay. Yeah, no, there are. And look, with Purdy, the sentiment against him winning MVP was that the team is so loaded and they have all these superstars and anyone could do this. Well, Jimmy Garoppolo never did this. He never played at this level. Nick Mullins never did this, never played at this level. And the other thing I want to focus on is there's this idea that the Niners' offensive line is good. It is not good at all. It is Trent Williams and then just pray it's for reputation. the other four guys. Yeah. It is reputation. Brock Purdy is running for his yeah. life every play. Compare yeah. that to how amazing the Eagles' offensive line is. Uh, and look, Purdy, he made the throws he had to make, the uh, the breaking route to McCaffrey down the left sideline, the third and seven to Ayuk. These are plays that he had to have, and he made them all. And uh, in terms of weapons, the guy who really stood out even more than McCaffrey was Debo Samuel. Yeah, friend of the podcast. Debo was dominant. Friend of the podcast, uh, multi appearances yes. for Debo Samuel. And it was just in every aspect for Debo, whether it was as a receiver, whether it was as a runner. He gets two receiving touchdowns. He runs the score in, as we just showed you there. 
I mean, this was vintage Debo Samuel in a nutshell, Matthews. You could use him in so many different ways that in the quick game, you just get the ball in his hands and let him make a play after the catch. Well, what's clear is, is that he's finally fully healthy, right? I mean, you're always starting Ayuk. You're always starting uh, Christian McCaffrey, Kittle as well because of the tight ends. But Debo Samuel very quietly now has scored a rushing touchdown in three of his past four games, which tells me, like, again, he's fully healthy. They're starting to use the full Debo, as I like to call it. The Kyle Shanahan using the full Debo. And you always want to go full Debo. Oh, you always want to go yeah. full Debo. Everyone yeah. knows that. So, uh, anyway, but, like, I think Debo Samuel, again, continues to be a locked-in starter as well. If you have any one of these 49ers, you're excited about it. And back to Brock Purdy, like, as we enter Monday Night Football, he's the second-best quarterback in fantasy football. All he does is continue to put up points as long as the Niners are healthy. He will continue, despite the fact he doesn't run, he just operates at such a high efficiency, as does this entire offense. He continues to be just kind of a locked in QB1. Eagle side of the ball here, and this is a narrow offense. Ultimately, Jalen Hurts has a nice game. It wasn't a great game NFL-wise. Fantasy-wise, he gets the rushing touchdown. He, he gets in there. It's fine. Um, to me, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith do A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith things. That was good. In a game in which they only scored, what is it, 19 points? Yeah, 19. Like, the fact is, is that you, you got production out of both those guys, but that's about it. This is a bad game for DeAndre Swift. It was a bad game. And look, this Niners run defense, which had been a little bit leaky, uh, they are all the way back. And this defensive line against the run uh, and their linebackers, just the whole operation, you cannot run on San Francisco. My concern for the Eagles is that I thought they played relatively well on offense. Like, they were 8 of 15 on third down. Hertz was efficient enough. Uh, the offensive line was incredible. The Niners couldn't get anything. Like, Nick Bosa had no chance against Lane Johnson. Uh, and they lost by 23 at home, even given that, because the defense just had no prayer against the Niners' offense. Yeah, just they don't have – other than Brown and Smith, they, they really need Goddard back as well. But DeAndre Swift just 6 for 13. Once again, not involved in the passing game. Just two receptions for seven yards. He goes in the medical tent in the, uh, late in the fourth quarter as well. So he didn't play the full game. But here's the concern. Since week one, this is his fewest touches and yards in a game. He played 42% of the snaps. That's the lowest in a game since week one. At both Philadelphia losses this season, he's played under 60% of the snaps. So that's a concern. And the Eagles, again, have either been uh, winning big or at least, uh, you know, uh, tied, you know, or, or competitive when they're getting down, like they just abandon Swift. Again, there's no passing game usage, which makes them a little bit more fragile than most fantasy superstars. They're on the road at Dallas next week, yeah. a game that'll be right here on NBC and Peacock. Just a massive game. I'm a company man. Cannot wait. Very excited. But um, I, slight concern for me on DeAndre Swift, guys. I think it's justified right now. Yeah, I think so. I also, like, there's a lot of pouring dirt on Philadelphia today, and I get it. They lost by 23 at home to their biggest rival in the NFC. But this team has been screwed by the schedule. They had to play the Bills, uh, where the Bills had a rest advantage. Then they had to play the Niners, where the Niners have a rest advantage. They played over 90 snaps on defense against the Bills. So I think they were just worn out. And by the way, next week, gonna say. Cowboys have a rest advantage because yeah, they yeah. played three teams in a row that were playing on the Thursday when they played uh, on the Sunday or Monday. So uh, I think that they will be better. Uh, and this team is still too talented. And Swift, here's the other thing for Swift. Their last three games of the season, Giants, Cardinals, Giants. And so he's, he's probably going to be a monster in those games. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Eagles, well, after the Dallas game. It, like no, Seattle. The, the Seattle, Giants, Arizona. And, um, Giants, and, then, yeah. and then Giants, I believe. So, But anyway, so Dallas obviously going to be a very tough matchup, but it gets down the schedule. So if you can get into the playoffs, I think you'll still be fine. But just, I, I probably, DeAndre, so prior to this game, I probably would have said a borderline RB1, and now I think probably more of an RB2. But somebody you're still starting every week, just a tough day at the office for him and the entire Eagles offense. Honestly, not just the Eagles offense, but just the entire Eagles sideline personnel. Just bad day in Philadelphia. Bad day. Well, yeah, for the defense in particular, I thought that that's the real concern is they can't they can't cover anyone at the moment. And we've seen it with the secondary for week after week, and then when you get to San Francisco, it just becomes amplified. Yep. This is, I mean, quarterbacks against the Eagles are putting up massive fantasy points. Think about what Josh Allen – obviously Josh Allen is great and Purdy is great and everything, but, like, D Dak's a top three play this week against the yeah. Eagles. Dak's going to be your clear MVP favorite if they win on Sunday night, and then I think it'll deflate because they've got to play Buffalo, Miami, Detroit after that, and he'll lose one of those, and then Purdy will rise up, I think. But Dak is in a very good spot to uh, have the spotlight on him. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started 
after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.